Hey guys, PJ Crookshank in the house with the partner Vicky. Yeah, so we um, decided to do a, a little collab video between ourselves, just a reacting to this guy thinking he's uh, got to destroy Christianity. But first of all, we're going to start off with a little bit of lightheartedness and watch um, Craig through, through Sov, as Craig from FPFE, through Sov's channel, digging for globe evidence. So watch this guys. Are you, uh, you got anything to say Vicky? Say hello to the guys first. Hi. <laughs> that's Vicky's uh, that's Vicky's uh, penance worth. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, I would just actually got to say it's been a really hot day. I'm really warm at the minute. It's, it's warm where you're at as well, isn't it? Yeah, but do you know what? After all the rain and that was bad. Yeah. It's nice. Like, yeah, sunny days make feel good. Yeah, of course. Of course, they do. They do, I mean, like I say, I like the looks of what the sun looks like, but I can't stand the feeling of the sun in my skin. There you go. Yeah, we'll start off with a little bit of light art in this, and we'll watch Soft kick the make out of um, FTFE. Here we go. Oh my God, I've heard about digging deep for answers. Watch Craig here, watch what he does. <laughs> this boy's really digging for answers. Thank you very much. And we've got. You need to dig deep to get behind the ball. When you're ready. The heliocentric concept dies upon inception due to basic physical natural law. Nowhere in nature it comes. or in a controlled environment. Oh, can uh, uh, oh what's he going for? Of gas oh, of he's a clotted bugger. And he knows his own camera, didn't he, babe? I mean, he knows his own camera, but yet. His fingers go straight for his nose. Does he think he clicked off his camera, or does he does he know he's being watched? Because I don't know. I think, but... he's, he, I think he knows because he's done it before. I think yeah, he's done it before on, on camera. A box of Kleenex is like a pound. <laughs> Say that again, Viv. A box of Kleenex is like a pound. <coughs> I have them in the bedroom, <laughs> in the living room. Oh, it's not hard to no, get a box of hard. tissues and blow your nose. Well, I think it it must be quite hard because he's digging in there, so it must be hard to get out. <laughs> I know, but just get some Kleenex and blow your nose. Exactly. Get some Kleenex, blow it, and you might find some globe evidence in the hunky, you know? <laughs> Wait, oh, my God. Oh, look at him, man. <laughs> Gonna yeah, fuck her up to the third joint in his nose, man. Never has gas. Oh, yeah, he's before. really going to town. Evidence. Holy shit, I hope he got what he was looking for. You know? Wow. So, he didn't. He's always searching for globe evidence. He thinks he's got globe evidence and he's not got to find out that. That's for sure. You've got to <laughs> love Sov though, ain't ya? Oh, Sov's brilliant, man. Sometimes he's it'll be funny. Just brilliant, yeah. I was there this morning from like, uh, he started at half two. Half two for me, whatever time. It's probably about half nine for him. And I think it was about half, half past his midnight. He stopped, so it was like half past five for me, nearly six o'clock in the morning. But yeah. yeah. You ain't finding globe evidence there, Craig. Carry on, babe, sorry. It's a shame he's on so late. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. That's true. Yeah, it's good to catch him. It's good to catch him now and again. Right, here we go. Oh, that's insane. Let's let's watch it a little bit more. Let's, let's, let's watch it in <laughs> slow speed real quick. Why not? Right? Let's put the playback at... Uh, Let's slow it down half speed. This ought to be good. You guys ready for Nowhere this? Nowhere in nature <laughs> or in a controlled environment. Oh, oh, oh nasty. That boy's digging for gold, honey. <laughs> oh. Gold. No, there's no gold there. There's no gold evidence there. I don't know why you're going to be pig. I don't know why. <laughs> them there hills i bet you he ate it i bet you he ate it <laughs> oh. oh that was a disguised one he kind of he swifted by his nose to disguise it going in the mouth he flicked it in his mouth on the way it passed you know what i mean <laughs> yeah terrible isn't it well that's been your barfy short for the day <laughs> thought i'd just bombard you with that sovereign soul unchained mind don't forget to like click the like button and subscribe, share, all that other dumb shit. Enjoy. Exactly what he said. Subscribe. Boom. All that dumb crap. 
<laughs> that's amazing, isn't it? That's amazing. Yeah. And it's quite funny though, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's um, <laughs> it he's not getting any. Um, he's not getting. Any... I know he's not getting any evidence there. That's for sure. You know what I mean? If he's doing it on he's camera, he does it a lot. Well, well, that's it. That's it. You know. So yeah, it's one of them. One of them. So let's get this. Um, this other um, video is from a guy called. Uh, oh, stop screen flash for them. Yeah, sorry. This other this other video I'm gonna go react to is from a guy called uh, Sam Harris. This is Sam Harris's Sam Harris demolishes Christianity. So I mean, I haven't uh, I haven't seen it at all. Um, I just thought uh, watch it off the cuff. It's a it's a it's a title that um, resonates with me because we can't demolish Christianity. Christ is the truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He can't demolish Christianity. Do you know what I mean? God is in control of that. They think they can demolish Christianity, but they can't. But anyway, we'll watch it and see what's what has to be, what we have to say through it. You know what I mean? I've got to try and keep it down to kind of half an hour-ish um, at the most, or else I won't be able to edit it in the, in the editing um, app that I used. Um, but we'll we'll go for it. We'll go for it and see what it says. Just give me a, just tell me to stop, babe. Um, if you want to react to it, just anything. Just tell me to stop, yeah. Yep. Okay. Right. We'll start now. Bye, guys. Okay. Well, that was all very interesting. Um, <clears throat> ask yourselves, what is wrong with spending eternity in hell? What? Sorry, straight off, straight off the bat. What is wrong with spending eternity in hell? Have you read about hell? It says where there'll be weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. Does that sound like a nice place to you? No. I think, Would you... he, I think he thinks of naughty things that people do and think maybe that's what you do in hell, and obviously it's not. Well, we'll let's see what he's got to say, but... Yes. Uh, why would you want, not want to spend eternity in hell? Because it's separation from God, and that is pure despair. That's why. Simple. Well, I, I'm told it's rather hot there, for one. It, Dr. Craig is not offering. And the Hades will be thrown, and the, and the devil will be thrown into the lake of fire. Yes, it's got to be hot. Whether well, hell's hot for us, I do not know. But the lake of fire is going to be hot, that's for sure alternative view of morality okay the whole point of christianity or so it is imagined is to safeguard the eternal well-being of human souls now happily there's absolutely no evidence that the christian hell exists okay, and i think we should look at the consequences of belief you're not going to find find it physically are you you don't know what blooming hell is but Spiritually, we know it's real. Supernaturally, we know it's real. Through the truth of the Bible, we know it's real. Through the help of the Holy Spirit, we know it's real. Through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we know it's real. We don't want to go there, <laughs> do we? No. Right. No. Um, you got anything to say, babe? No, baby. All right, Karen. Even in this framework, this theistic framework, in this world, and what these moral underpinnings actually would be. All right. Nine million children die every year. By the way, guys, if you hear a little buzzing, it's not anything to do with me. It's, it's part of this video. So it must be to do with the guy's mic or something at the time. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's nothing to do with me. But it's, it's, not a, it's not a loud buzzing anyway. It's just a, a little bit every time. Before they reach the age of five. Okay, picture picture a, a, an Asian tsunami of the sort we saw in 2004 that killed a quarter of a million people. One of those every 10 days, killing children only under five. Okay, it's 20, 24,000 children a day, 1,000 an hour, 17 or so a minute. That means before I can get to the end of this sentence, some few children, very likely, will have died in terror and agony. Yeah, it's a, it's a fallen world. It's not God that's doing that. God is not trust a... Eh, Punishing these people, God disciplines. He's not punishing. The judgment hasn't come yet, so there's no punishment there. It's discipline. Well, God, so 
I don't know what you, I don't know what, he, what, he, what he's expecting right now, you know, it's crazy. Think of, think of the parents of these children. Think of the fact that, oh, yeah, that, that most of these... Men... That was my point. God's not to blame. It's a fallen world. We ate of that fruit. You know what I mean? We were beguiled by the devil. You know what I mean? By the serpent. We ate that fruit. It's a fallen world. It was meant to be perfect. You know? But we disobeyed God by eating of that fruit. Therefore, sin, the wages of sin, is death. It's simple. It's not us that did it. It's not God that did it. It's us. But do you know, if like when people, when bad things happen, like what he's talking about, people uh -huh. blame God for it, right? Of course. These people are they ever grateful for God to God for the good? Or is that's it my just point. The bad? That's my point a lot. That's my point a lot. Um, if you didn't, if if you didn't have the bad, you wouldn't appreciate good. You wouldn't know good. It'd be normality. You wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know it. And at the same time, like Vicky said, do you thank God for anything good? You you, you um you slag him off, you um uh, blaspheme his name when things go wrong, but when things go right, do you um thank him do you, for do it? Do you no. thank him? Do you worship no, him? No. no, you don't. You don't. Sorry. And women believe in God and are praying at this moment for their children to be spared. And their prayers will not be answered. Okay, but according to Dr. Craig, this is all part of God's plan. Any God would allow children by the millions to suffer and die in this way. And their parents to grieve in this way. Again, again, it's a fallen world. Do you mean a God that would allow? If he intervened in absolutely every single thing, we'd be robots. We wouldn't have free will. We wouldn't have free will. You know, we're predestined and have free will at the same time. We have choices within that predestination. You know what I mean? You can't blame, say God. God wouldn't allow this to happen. He wouldn't allow that to happen. There is an enemy at work as well. There's an enemy at work. God, he can intervene in every single thing. He's God, but he didn't want robots. He gave us free will. It's our freedom. Our free will, our choices that do these things because of the fallen world, the nature, the fallen nature of sin, man, which is sin. You know? Yeah. This way. Either can do nothing to help them or doesn't care to. He is therefore either impotent or evil. Wow. Tell you what, when he stands before God and calls him evil, you know, um, and, I mean, he probably doesn't believe in anything, he's probably atheist, but, I mean, if you did believe in the devil, do you think the devil loves you? No, he hates you. So I don't understand Satanists. They're all for the devil, but the devil hates you. You know what I mean? The devil absolutely hates you. Jealous of you because God chose you over him. And worse than that, on Dr. Craig's view, most of these people, many of these people certainly, will be going to hell because they're praying to the wrong God. Just think about that. Again, choice. You choose which God you pray to. There is only one God, but there's false idols, false gods. If you pray to them, yes, you're going to hell. Simple. Unless you repent, obviously. Everybody's got a chance to repent. Okay, through no fault of their own, they were born into the wrong culture where they got the wrong theology and they missed the revelation. Okay, there, there are one point. And the Bible says there'll be no excuses. People will, I mean, will have no excuse. They'll, they'll know about Jesus and they'll have no excuses. But this, this guy is just looking for excuses. What do you reckon? I think a lot of people do, though. Of course they do, of course. 1.2 billion people in India at this moment. Most of them are Hindus. Most of them, therefore, polytheists. Okay. In Dr. Craig's universe, no matter how good these people are, they are doomed. If you are, if you are praying to the monkey god Hanuman, you are doomed. Okay. Well, yeah. If I prayed to a monkey, then I'm sure I would be doomed. What is a monkey going to do for me? You know? God can save you. A monkey can't. 
You know what I mean? God, any other religion, you have to work for them. God came and got himself sacrificed for us. Who else would do that? What other God would do that? Would your monkey God do that? No. No. You will be tortured in hell for eternity. Now, is there the slightest evidence for this? No. It just says so in Mark 9 and Matthew 13 and Revelation 14. So you can't correlate the evil with the world with judgment and going to hell. You can't say there's any consequences to what you do at all. Do you think, um, I mean, life's not fair. Of course it's not. You know what I mean? But do you think if everything has got to be fair and go your go your way? No, you've got to work it out for yourself. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And I'm sorry, the way you're going, you can have your monkey god, dude. I know he's not worshiping monkey dog, god. He's just um, using it as an analogy, but still, you know. Okay, perhaps you'll remember from the Lord of the Rings. It says when the elves die, they go to Valinor, but they can be reborn in Middle Earth. Okay, I say that just as a point of comparison. Okay, so God created the cultural isolation of the Hindus. Okay, he engineered the circumstance of their deaths in ignorance of revelation. And then he created the penalty for this ignorance, which is an eternity of conscious torment in fire. Well, you guys, well, the quality is not brilliant. It only goes to 360. I just checked it. It only goes to 360, so it's not excellent. Okay, on the other hand, on Dr. Craig's account, your run-of-the-mill serial killer in America, okay, who, who spent his life raping and torturing children, need only come to God, come to Jesus, on death row, and after a final meal of fried chicken, he's going to spend an eternity in heaven after death. Yes, that's forgiveness for you. Anybody can go to heaven if they ask for forgiveness, repent, and believe that Jesus Christ died for their sins. Confess with your mouth that he is Lord, and he died for you, and believe in your heart that he died for your sins, and you can be saved. Simple as that. Simple as that. You don't have to. You, you don't have to think about your works. Then you don't have to think about. Um, PDF files going to not going to hell or murderers not going to hell because they repented. They repented. If they repented, they're sorry and they want to change their ways. If they truly do we, repent, do we even know how many actually did? Or is did he what? just saying repent? They can say they have, but have they? No, exactly, exactly, exactly. I me, mean, I mean, you don't know. I mean, the uh, majority of them enjoy what they do you know what i mean so they'll go to hell anyway because they don't want to repent but the, you do yeah. get the ones that can repent and they and they will be saved it's the same god classifies sin as the same a lie is the same as murdering someone sin is sin you know what i mean he doesn't class it it's only humans that classify oh murder's worse than this or rape is more worse than that a lie is not as bad as this it's us that classify sin god doesn't classify sin sin is sin there's different consequences on F to different sins, but the punishment for the the judgment from God will be the same for any sin. You know? Yeah. Okay. One thing should be crystal clear to you. This vision of life has absolutely nothing to do with moral accountability. Okay, and please notice the double standard that people like Dr. Craig use to you don't know what morals are then, dude. To exonerate God from all this evil. Okay, we're, we're told that God... A bit like Brenda. Brenda doesn't know what morals is. Brenda thinks you morals know, that are... Actually, as soon as he said about morals, that made me think. Because somebody like Brenda, whose yeah. morals are all about his own, their yeah. own, whatever's gratification. Yeah. Then... then why would she go to heaven? Exactly. You've got, you've literally admitted that all your morals are about you. If it makes exactly. you feel good, exactly. exactly. What about exactly. other people? What about the effect that something may make you feel good, but it may yeah. make others feel bad? Exactly, exactly. But I'll have to get on with this anyway because it's nearly twenty minutes, and I can only do about half an hour. At the okay. well, less than half an hour, but just by the time I edit and sum it, then. Yeah, let's get on that. God is loving and kind and just and intrinsically good. Yes, he is. 
But when someone like myself points out the ob rather obvious and compelling evidence that God is cruel and unjust because he visits suffering on innocent people of a scope and scale that would, would embarrass the most ambitious psychopath, okay, we're told that God is mysterious. Okay, who can understand God's will? Okay, and yet this Again, thinking with a natural mind. You're not thinking with a supernatural mind. You know what I mean? Um, God's supernatural. We think with a natural mind. We think it's not fair. God is holy. Whatever he says goes. It's simple. This is precisely, this merely human understanding of God's will is precisely what believers use to establish his goodness in the first place. You know, something good happens to a Christian. Some, he feels some bliss while praying, say, or he sees some positive change in his life, and we're told that God is good. Okay, but when children by the tens of thousands are torn from their parents' arms and drowned, we're told that God is mysterious. Okay, this is how you play tennis without the net. Okay, and I want to suggest to you that it is not only tiresome when otherwise intelligent people speak this way, it is morally reprehensible. Are you calling yourself intelligent? When you call yourself intelligent, there's no humility in that, and there's usually no intelligence. You might sound it. But in general, no. This kind of faith is, is really is the perfection of narcissism. I mean, God loves me. Don't you know? He, he, he does cured love you. me of my eczema. He, he makes me feel so good while singing in church. And, and just when we had given up hope. God's not there to make you feel good. That's not the point. He found a banker who was willing to reduce my mother's mortgage. Okay. Given all the all that this God of yours does not accomplish, He's not a Santa Claus. He's holy and righteous. He's not there to give gifts. It's not about what He can do for you. It's about what you can do for him. Jesus. But Simple. He's also forgetting that we are people. Exactly. And people exactly. make choices, and choice people's choices affect other people. So He's blaming God for what people are doing. You can't yeah, be doing exactly. that. Blame the exactly. people. Yeah, exactly. Right. Let's keep going. In the lives of others, given, given the, the misery that's being imposed on some helpless child at this instant, this kind of faith is obscene. Okay. This, to think in this way is to fail to reason honestly or to care sufficiently about the suffering of other human beings. And if God is good and loving and just and kind, and he wanted to guide us morally with a book. Why give us a book that supports slavery? Why give us a book that admonishes us to... It doesn't support slavery. It goes on about... There is slavery in there. God didn't want slavery. And the other slaves that you're on about are bond servants. They're different. But when it comes to like the, the, the Hebrews being enslaved in Egypt, it's not God that did that. The Egyptians... kill people Doesn't support for imaginary slavery. crimes like witchcraft it's not imaginary now, of course there's a way of not taking these questions to heart okay, according to dr craig's divine command theory god is not bound by moral duties god doesn't have to be good whatever he commands is good so when he commands that the israelites to slaughter the amalekites that behavior becomes intrinsically good because he commanded it okay well and if you have a creator that what he says goes, then of course, that what he says is holy whether you agree with it or not. Simple. Here we're being offered, I'm glad he raised the issue of psychopathy, we're being offered a psychopathic and psychotic moral attitude. It's psychotic because this is completely delusional. There's no reason to believe that we live in a universe ruled by an invisible monster, Yahweh. How can God be psychotic? Psychotic is for people of a phys physical nature. God's not physical. But it is, it is psychopathic because this is a total detachment from the, from the well-being of human beings. It, this so easily rationalizes the slaughter of children. Okay, just, th just think about the Muslims at this moment who are blowing themselves up, okay, convinced that they are agents of God's will. There is absolutely nothing that Dr. Craig can, can say against their behavior in moral terms. I thought this was about Christianity, not Islam. Apart from his own faith-based claim that they're praying to the wrong God. 
Well, if they yeah. had the right God, what they were doing would be good on divine command theory. Now, I'm obviously not saying that all the Dr. Craig or all religious people are psychopaths and psychotics, but this to me is the, is the true horror of religion. Okay, it allows perfectly decent and sane people to believe by the billions what only lunatics could believe on their own. Okay, so, if you wake up tomorrow morning thinking that saying a few laughs. Go on. Again, go on. It's people. People are choosing to do this and saying they're doing it for their God. Yeah. Again, it's a person's exactly. choice. It's nothing to do with yeah. religion or anything. If you were going to do something like that, that is on you. That is not on religion. I'm sorry. Exactly. Exactly. Right. I'm going to have to play this till the end now because there's five minutes left and there's only three in here. So let's just play this to the end and say a quick word at the end. Latin words over your pancakes is going to turn them into the body of Elvis Presley. Okay. You have lost your mind. Okay. But if you think more or less the same thing about a cracker and the body of Jesus, you're just a Catholic. Wow. You see it from the wrong angle completely. And, and I'm not the first person to notice that it's a, it's a very strange sort of loving God who would make salvation depend on believing in him on bad evidence. Okay, it's when you have the Holy Spirit, spirit your the Holy Spirit bears witness to your spirit. Simple as that. Not bad evidence at all. It's called faith, by through grace. It's. I mean, if you lived two thousand years ago, there was evidence galore. I mean, he was just performing miracles. But apparently, he got tired of being so helpful. Okay, and so now we we all inherit this very heavy burden of the doctrines and plausibility. And, 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 and the effort to square it with what we now know about the cosmos and, we, and what we know about the all too human origins of scripture becomes more and more difficult. On Dr. Craig's account is the true moral wealth of the world. Well, I hate to break it to you here at Notre Dame, but Christianity is a cult of human sacrifice. Yeah. Christianity is n not a religion. We'll stop it there because of time. There's only like a minute left or not, and I think I'm summing up anyway. But Christianity is not a cult. Yes, there is sections of Christianity that are cultish, without a doubt. But Christianity in itself is not a cult, you know? Um, this guy is looking at it from all the pessimistic points of view, being cynical, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with being skeptical, even the Bible says to test everything. But yeah, I don't think this guy's um, coming at it fairly at all. You got anything to say, babe, before we finish? I think he's biased against God, if I'm yeah. being honest, in Christianity. I think he's got an issue with it, and hopefully one day he'll find the truth. Absolutely. Well said. And I think we'll finish that. Nice one, babe. And thank you for joining me in this reaction. And we'll get this out later tonight. Um, bless you guys. Thanks for coming and watching. And thanks for listening. Here the sunset's free. It's free. Indeed. Ta-da, guys.